this site that we've put together, we started to put together. We're going to use it today, we're going to use it next week, and two weeks, and so forth. It's, it's our starting point of an e-commerce site. Because this, yes, we've got a lot of details to work with, like the database and duplicator plugin. But this is a site. This is a real site. You don't need to know the code, because behind every website is this, full of code, hundreds of lines of code. With Dreamweaver, or with WordPress, or with FrontPage, or with Wix, or whatever, there's a way to create a, a nice looking site instead of knowing the code. But behind the scenes it's always some code. Here uh, in WordPress we'll go back to the dashboard. What we're going to do is talk about widgets. Widgets are found inside of the appearance screen. Hover over appearance and then you will see widgets. So go ahead and click widgets And this is where, again, I'll say, depending on your theme, things will be different. Our particular theme, I think it's called Hotel. <coughs> and here's what we see. Now, what widgets are, it's part of the, the extra features of our site. And what I mean by that is on, on the site itself, on the home page, it says welcome. And on the site... On the side here, we have these items, search, <coughs> recent posts, recent comments, archives. So that sidebar right there has widgets. <coughs> and that's what we're looking at here, primary, the main sidebar. It is displayed on either the left or the right side of the page based on chosen layout. Depending on the theme, you might get more, you might get one or more areas where you can add widgets. There's a widget that will let you search your site. A widget that'll be uh, a list of all of the comments that people add to your site. So widgets let you do you know, little tasks. And depending on your site, you might have several areas to put them in. So this screen is very complex, but if we break it down, we've got left column, right column, left column, we've got available widgets. And it's not obvious, but if you click on Available Widgets, it closes it. Below Available Widgets, in my case, I've got Inactive Sidebar, not used. That's open and closable. And then you've got Inactive Widgets. So I've got these three. And depending on your, on your theme, you may have more or less Inactive and Available. And on the right, I've got Primary. We've got, on our website at the moment, right on the front page, <coughs> at the very bottom, Site Admin. That's great for me and the hackers. Because right on my home page, I've got a place for me to log into my site, as well as for the hackers to try to log into my site. I don't want that. I don't want to show the front door to my e-commerce site on the home page. Here in the widget screen, it's this, Meta. If you click the little triangle to the right of Meta, <coughs> there aren't any options here. Some widgets have a lot of settings and options. This one is very basic, and what I would like to do is to remove the ability for someone to sign in on the site admin. But that widget doesn't have any extra customization to let you do that. It's just either allow the Meta widget or not. I think it's too much of a liability. I don't want people to log in this way. I'm going to remove the ability for anyone to log in. And the way I do that is if you open the triangle there, what do you think what do you think you can do to stop that? Delete. <laughs> delete. <laughs> Easy. So click on delete. There's no confirmation. It did it. <laughs> if there were extra options here that I customized, those options would go away once I delete. <laughs> question. So once I click delete, it's gone. There's no confirmation and there's no recycle bin for me to bring it back from. It's gone. Let's say uh, now that I've, now that I've uh, changed my, my primary widget area a bit, uh, let's <coughs> click 
let's click back up here to visit site. And now if you look on the sidebar, recent posts, recent comments, there's no meta. There you go, there's no meta. We removed the widget. Now there's no way for the bad guys to log in. We've also removed a way for us to log in. But remember, the address at the moment is, whatever the name of your site is, slash wp-admin. We can still get back to it that way. We just don't have that, that front door anymore for people to, to try to get in. Let's get back to the dashboard and let's get back to the widgets. So I'll go back to dashboard. Notice there's a quick shortcut here, widgets. But I'm going to go back to the dashboard. Appearance, widgets. We've got the search widget. If you open it up, again, this one just has the option. Give it a title, delete it, or close it. We've got recent posts. It has an option. Give it a title, number of posts to show. This is going to show blog posts. If I've written 20 blog posts on the side, it'll show you a preview of five of them. I can show two, I can show 20, whatever. Comments, archives, whatever, arc, uh, categories. Okay, I've got all of these possible things. Displays drop down. Um, let's try this one. Change your category so that it says display is drop down and uh, on the title I'll say our categories here it does ask you to confirm to save it it doesn't ask you to confirm to delete it so click save and what I also want to do is make categories a little more prominent. So notice you can click and drag the widget. And I'll say, sh first show search, then categories and the others. So just click and drag it. That one happens automatically. You may see a little spinning circle for a moment, meaning it's processing it. That one doesn't confirm it. If you move it, you moved it. There's no undo either. I want to see this result, so go back to visit site. There's search, there's our categories. Recent posts, etc. That's what I typed, our categories. It also shows it there. And now I've got this drop down button. Click that and it shows we don't have any categories really, but what if we had a category of pies, and a category of cakes and cookies and, and vegan friendly and gluten free, because we've got this bakery where we're selling stuff. What if we've got a category of chocolate and a category of pecans? Everything can be organized and therefore people can find what they want. I can customize it as we're seeing here. I'll go back to widgets. Actually, I see it's not that useful. If you select the, the shortcut of widgets, it kind of takes you to this other training wheels of widgets, which I don't quite like. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard, appearance, widgets. Let's say for whatever reason I don't want to display one of these widgets, but I don't want to lose the customization. I've customized categories. I've changed the title and added the drop-down. If I delete it, I lose it all. I don't want to delete. Instead, what I want to do is make it an inactive widget. I want to deactivate it. And the way I would do this is, if you close your available widgets area, and you close your inactive sidebar, you have a section of inactive widgets. Drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar, but keep their settings. Instead of just deleting a widget, if you drag it from, he from here to here and make sure the dotted line appears right there. It might not appear right away. Make sure you've got a dotted line and then drop it. I've removed the widget from my view. It's no longer there, but I haven't lost my settings. Question? Uh, the site was on that, on that side, there was Sidebar? I'm sorry. The side and 
the sign in was part of the meta widget. Sorry, I don't get your question. On your particular theme, that's what I'm going to say over and over. On your theme, it's going to be a little different. So you want to check. I've got a primary widget area. You might have a footer widget area. Look at the footer widget area, and if you've got that meta widget, that's your login, and that's what you want to remove. So now I've moved the widget out of the active area into inactive. All my settings are still there. That could be valuable. You could be redesigning the look of your site a little bit, and you could move things out of sidebars, but you don't want to lose their capabilities. Um, in the available widgets area, if you open that, you can put a calendar. That's more of a calendar of posts that you've made, blog posts. You can put, there's the meta one again if you want to bring it back. If you create menus, you can put the menus in the sidebar. Because remember, we have a menu screen. In the menu screen, you don't have to go to it, but in the menu screen, we have one place where we can put a menu according to this theme. Well, actually, I can also use the sidebar because I can add, I can grab the custom menu from the bar over here, put it off to the side here, and I'll say the social media menu. So any custom menus that I have created, I can put them into a widget area, customize it a bit, and in this case now, those social links that I created previously now I'll find them on the on the sidebar. I have to remember to save that. And the way that looks like is like this. Now I've got my, my links there. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. So this is how you further customize your layout. The theme author gives you a, um, a theme, and you have the ability to edit the sidebars, the widgets, footers, all of that, customize the appearance. And as I said last time, this is level one of uh, working with WordPress. Start with the theme, customize it as the authors let you, take advantage of all of the features, because I also have, what else, uh, Tag Cloud, this, this theme's not that complex. Sometimes you have widgets that let you display all your latest tweets, or maybe a slideshow of pictures. It depends on your theme and other things. What? Like a countdown, yeah, you can set up a widget that will count down to the day of your event. So depending on your theme or plugins, you might have extra widgets. No, actually, good point. I'm in this theme of hotel, and I've set up my widgets like this. If I switch over to a different theme, it won't, it, it won't follow me, because the new theme doesn't exactly know what I want. The new theme might have a primary and a secondary widget area, and this one only has primary, so it doesn't know that I want some in primary and some in secondary, so it doesn't do anything. I just have to go back in and then reset my, my widget locations. Is there a external app or, I don't know, website that we can actually Not really, because the, the concept is there's no website or app really that will know what you want. Everyone is unique. And so there, there's nothing to my knowledge, and maybe there is something nowadays, that will help you keep track of that. But that's only really your problem if you're switching themes often. You know, you're gonna create a new you're gonna create a site this year and maybe next year change the theme or in two years. If you're changing the design of your site every so often, that's gonna confuse your users. That's going to say, Am I on the right site? And they'll leave. So you don't want to change the design of your site that often. 
And when you do change it, yeah, maybe you'll lose your customization and such, but I take out a piece of paper and I make a note. Sidebar has this, 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 and this. And when I get my new theme, I just look at my notes and put it back together. One of the most powerful widgets here is also the most unassuming one. Let's try this. You should see a widget called text. Drag the text widget anywhere into the sidebar. I'm going to put it at the bottom. Right there. And it asks for a title and some text. So I'll just write here uh, my text widget. This is a text widget. It is great. Save it, and then you view it on your site. So I'm just writing something. doesn't really matter what. I'm writing something. It's in my text widget. When I visit site, okay, put text, my text widget. Well, I said it's one of the most powerful widgets because, notice, arbitrary text or HTML. If I put HTML or CSS code there, it will activate it. If I do this, <coughs> if I type this HTML code, as I said earlier, all websites are made out of HTML code, basically. If I type that code and save it, it will do something different. It will change the look of my um, of my text. Instead of plain old text, instead of the text that is decided upon by the theme, I write some code, I save it, and then the result looks like this. That's italicized, and that's bold. Well, I can get much more complex. Okay, you can do this if you want, but it's not really the class for it yet. If you know some code, you can write your code and look at this. There was no button that let me put a pink background or choose italics or whatever, but I know some code. I can edit the code, and then I did that. So this very unassuming widget is the most powerful one because any code that I know of HTML and CSS I can apply here. When you get, when you set yourself up to do affiliate marketing, for example, or when you get affiliate links from Amazon to get a little kickback from Amazon, they're going to give you a little chunk of code. You take that code, you plug it in there, and now you're gonna get affiliate links and money from that. Let me show you here a concrete example. On my website, my blog, you go and read the blog and see the cool stuff that I have, and then maybe if you click on the ad here on the side, you will, I'll get a little kickback. This is a Google, ad, Google AdWords. Uh, they give me the code, I put it on my site, and if anyone ever clicks on that, I get a few pennies. So if enough people get it, I'll get a couple dollars. But that's how people make money online. That's why you see ads. That's why there's blogs where writing great content, how to tie a tie, how to fix your, uh, your transmission, how to do this, how to do that. People visit these blogs, they read them, they click a link. Someone's making money by clicking those links. I think I've made a cool like 36 cents off of this <laughs> in about a year. Yes? Just from clicking, no purchase. Exactly. You get more if they go and do the whole follow-through of the whole process. But this is at least, because this is what is known as an impression. Right now, I got 30 impressions. All of you sock it. How many of you will click it? Zero. Unless you actually care about comics. So then you follow through there, and those are worth more. Impressions are very little value. Then you've got conversions, and then follow-throughs and all of that. But you can get that, and it's out of the scope of our class, but you can get Google AdSense it's free. You can set it up so that people click on ads on your site, you're going to get some money. You can get this on Amazon as well. 
you can get affiliate links from Amazon. Uh, it's not that complex to set up. My company will probably set up, will do a video to teach about it soon. And you can start putting, you can start blogging. Let's say I'm a, I'm a foodie and I like to write about food. And let's say I recommend that, uh, you know, that Viking oven. And I go over to Amazon and I get the link for Viking ovens. And I put it on my blog. And if someone clicks my link to go buy that oven on Amazon, I get a kickback. That's the way people make money nowadays online. And it's simply using, for example, the text widget, which will take any code. It's your site. You can put any code. Let's get really fancy here. You can do more than one of these. So I'm going to add another text widget right below the text one. And this one will be watch our video. I want to put a video on the side there. There's no widget that says add video. Depending on your theme, there may be. But this one will always work. You put the text widget, and now we need the code for a video. What's the biggest video site in the world? YouTube. YouTube. Let's go to, let's open another window and let's go to youtube.com. Any video we can attach to our website because by default every video on YouTube has code that they give you. You can find any video here. But let's say I'm going to recommend this, this video. If you search how to use Peach like a pro. If you search for that term, you should see the top result after the ad. You should see our video on how to use the newest social network that you've never heard of, Peach. It just came out about a month and a half ago, two months now maybe. It's a brand new social network. And I've never heard of it. How do I use it? We've got a video there in 12 minutes how to use it. I want to show that video on my site. Any video from YouTube or just about any other video site has a way to do it. If I click on the video and I see share, you see this on websites all over the place nowadays, a way to share. Below every YouTube video there's going to be share, unless the person turns it off. You can turn off share, but most people have it on. You, you look below share, Okay, share it to Twitter, share it to Reddit, whatever, or embed it on my site. And that is code that I can copy from YouTube and paste into the text widget. So I'm going to copy the embed <coughs> code. It's inside the share. If you don't see it, it's inside of share, inside of embed. Take that code, copy, paste it into your text widget. save it. Now when I view my site, video, right on my site. Hello everyone, this is Victor for PMD Interactive. Let's take a look at the latest and greatest social network on the block, and it's Peach. This is the Peach social network. So I can take any video, it's coming from YouTube, I can do it full screen, all of that. Um, just about every site nowadays has some way to, to share. I upload my, my video to YouTube, I can then share it on my own site. And that's what I recommend. I don't recommend, if you're going to do video, I don't recommend to upload it directly to your WordPress site because you're going to run out of space. Eventually, when you get to the point where you buy Bluehost service or GoDaddy service or whatever, and you start uploading your own videos to your own site, you're going to start running low on space because videos take a lot of space. And number two, you're going to slow down your site because as people watch the video, they are connecting to your site, to your server, and downloading the video. And if you become popular, a lot of people are going to download the video. So I don't recommend to add video directly to your own site because in WordPress we have the ability media add new I can <coughs> upload videos to my WordPress I don't recommend that 
I recommend create a free account at YouTube or the other video sharing sites and let YouTube take care of the the space and the bandwidth and the uptake, uh, the upkeep and all of that. Let them take care of it because they give you the code for you to put your video on your site. The marketing, you can go to the settings and you can turn off the ability to show video to show ads or not. But that could still be valuable because if you turn on video, if you turn on ads on your videos, that's another way to make money online. That video that appears on our video there, if people click it, we get a little money out of that. Website. Yes. You're still watching the video s saved on YouTube, and YouTube can keep track of all of that. In our case, that's very true. I got a random address. YouTube doesn't know who to pay. In the social media class, I talk about that. In the social media class, we spend two days on YouTube. One day talking about creating videos, because obviously you need a video for YouTube. So day one, we spend three hours, three and a half hours, on creating videos. Day two, we talk about creating the account, uploading it, setting up that payment system, whatever, and then we can start uploading YouTube videos and getting paid for them. That's in the social media class. I don't remember when it's offered. Look for it in the catalog, but I highly recommend it. Of next month? Cool. I'll see you guys there. <laughs> the embed right here? Yeah. Yes. It's better than media because when you upload it to your own server, you're using up your own resources, you're slowing down your own site, but if you do it this way, it's YouTube. It's coming from them, yes. So did, did that automatically resize it to fit that size one? It did. It did. When I took it from YouTube and you look at show more, you have options of how big to make it. But that's still dependent on your theme and your widget area. If you've got a very tall and thin widget area, then this wide video gets scrunched down to that size, as I'm seeing here. So if I've got the space for it, it will grow and shrink to the right size. So YouTube is one of the big sites for videos. You can save videos there and then embed them on your own site. Does anyone know another big video site? Vimeo. V-I-M-E-O. Vimeo.com. It's a competitor to YouTube. It's not as big. How many of you have heard of Vimeo before today? A few people, less than half the class. So it is a competitor to YouTube. It's not as big and famous, but the caliber of the content on Vimeo is higher. In a sense, it's snobbier than YouTube. People that use Vimeo are a bit more snobs than YouTube because any person can record a shaky cell phone video and upload it to YouTube. But Vimeo, the culture of Vimeo is a bit more like, you better put that camera on a tripod and <laughs> put some cool intro music and such. Now, you are going to see a lot of ugly, shaky videos on Vimeo, but they're not, they don't, they're not trafficked. They're not popular. What you see on Vimeo are videos that people spend a little bit more effort to create. And there is actually a whole paid version of Vimeo. You don't see ads, disruptive ads. You, you don't get bombarded with these negative comments because YouTube is a free-for-all and, and it can easily devolve into negativity. But on Vimeo, it's a bit more of a community where people upload their uh, more professional kinds of videos. And you, of course, can create an account there. And, and um, like here, here's independent filmmakers that have uploaded their documentaries and such. And you can, you can buy them. It's like, it's like iTunes, it's like Hulu, whatever. It's Vimeo Pro. 
and same thing you can go here and you can get it for free and upload your videos and take the embed code and add it to your site a taste of Vienna so here's a three minute video <coughs> site. You've got the share button. Usually it's a little arrow, but they're whimsical here. They've got a little paper airplane. So on the share button of the paper airplane, there's the embed code. I'll add another text widget. Paste that code. And I've got another video on my site. That was a little bit different. When we had selected Show five. Oh, that was about posts. So videos, you will decide how long they stay on there, and then mm -hmm. you'll switch them out. Yes, exactly. Okay. This text one is anything we want to do with it, whereas some of these other ones might have other settings, okay. like uh, recent posts. Show five of them. So this is the best way to do it. Like, say something just like Yelp. Um, so you can post the mm -hmm. button on the website. The same thing. Exactly. Uh, here's uh, here's a tangible example for a client. We we did this website for this Italian food restaurant in uh, Chula Vista, and look right there on the side. There's the Yelp reviews. These are real live Yelp reviews. If it goes higher or lower, it shows up here automatically because they gave us the embed code. We just apply it to the sidebar, and when people the 295th person, it'll automatically update. Uh, when they get more reviews on TripAdvisor, that will automatically update. These websites now, they give you this embed code, and that's how we add it to our site. That's always the test right? That's always what? Oh, yes. It's, I, hes I hesitate to say always, but this is like 98% of the time. There are some widgets specifically designed for some tasks. And you would get those extra widgets depending on your theme or depending on other plugins. Plugins. But the text widget is one of the most powerful ones that comes built in. Yes? So, if I didn't want that displayed as a video, I just want to display it on my status page and on my other pages. Is that, do I change that in my various page settings? If I use individual page, I have to have it visible? What happens is we've got the most basic installation of WordPress at the moment. So whatever we add to this sidebar, this widget area, gets added to all my pages, and I don't want it on all my pages. A little bit later, I'll talk about another plugin that gives you even more features so that you show this widget on this page, but not that page. Uh, we, don't have, we don't have it set up yet, we'll, but we'll talk about it. So here's a couple of video sites that might be useful to you. Have you heard about the YouTube of PowerPoint? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? The YouTube of PowerPoint. People create PowerPoint presentations and put them up on this site to share them, to sell them, to give them away, whatever. And it's called slideshare.net. It's the YouTube of PowerPoint. And a PowerPoint is a presentation. And so this site's been around a while. You create a presentation and you upload it here. It's like YouTube. You take out PowerPoint, you design a five-slide presentation about your experiences in whatever. You upload it here. People can view it, comment on it, share it. And when you get to the social media class, we don't talk about SlideShare, but when you get to the social media class, all of social media is to get you traffic. For businesses. For personal, it's for me to share those cat, those cat pictures and those cat videos and those cat jokes. But for businesses, it's to share content to get you traffic. 
traffic back to my website where I will sell them a product or have them subscribe to my newsletter or have them donate to my nonprofit or read my blog whatever you're trying to do on your website you need visitors social media is one of the ways to get visitors so think about this I'm a I'm a web design company and I want to get more traffic to my web design company so that I can get hired for more web design jobs I could create a 10 slide presentation on some of the concepts of web design and upload it here and give it away because a great tactic in marketing is give something away to get back more in return as I give away some of these things not every secret not every technique but just enough to give people the sense that they can do it themselves and as they try to do it themselves and then can't quite do it themselves then they can hire someone that can do it so what do we have here marketing seven deadly sins some things about lynda.com managing conflict um, top tips for working smarter so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna look at this presentation maybe I'm gonna learn something and great I take it and I apply it to my life and I'm profitable or maybe I see that interquestgroup.com is very knowledgeable about this and I need someone that can do it well, I'll hire them. Or at the very least, I'll reach out to them. So yes. this doesn't have necessarily any um, narration to it. It's just slides, which kind of leaves you hanging a little bit. Right? No, if the person creates the PowerPoint presentation with narration, okay. it has narration. So if it has animation, narration, anything that they design, how they design it, that's how it'll show up. Most of these are easier to do without narration because it's just a bunch of text and they upload it. But some of the more, you know, interesting ones have the actual narration and such. But let's say here, typography for digital humanists. This would look great on my site. I've got share, embed code. Now, sometimes you see embed code, sometimes you see WordPress short code. Those are different. The embed code is to put it into a sidebar widget, and the short code is often to put it right on your blog post. So if I write an article and I want this PowerPoint between the two paragraphs that I've written in my post, I would usually want the short code version. The embed code is usually to put off on a sidebar. And so that code with a little bit of settings here, I can copy that, paste it into a text widget. And now I'm getting a very cluttered sidebar, but I've got a PowerPoint a presentation on the side. Embed code if it's in the sidebar, and short code if it's in the middle of your blog post. And so this is the this is the uh, this is the YouTube of of presentations. People upload this and and get famous on on uh, on on this and get traffic and sales or whatever. And it's so big that LinkedIn bought them. They paid a few hundred million dollars and they bought them. And they're integrating LinkedIn, the biggest social network for professionals, and they've integrated it with SlideShare. So they, they thought this is a good investment, we'll pay, uh, we, we can spare a few hundred million dollars. And they bought it. Yes? On any of these slides, any of these presentations, when you view it, you should see a button right below the title that says Share. Under Share, then you want to take the bit of code inside of the embed section, right? If it doesn't have it, the author might have deactivated it. So if, if you don't see it, they probably deactivated it. By default, everything is shareable. That's the web, that's the modern web, that's social media, everything shareable. If you don't want it to be shared, if my idea is so amazing, I don't want anyone else to see it unless they pay for it, you can turn that on or off. But honestly, anything you put online, there's always a way for someone to steal it. And it's harsh to say, but you have to believe that. Anything you put online is going to get stolen. Anything online could be stolen. Okay, let me put it more optimistically. Anything you put online could be stolen. Not that it will be stolen, it could be stolen. You have to you have to have that on the back of your mind. 
I'm not going to, unfor unfortunately, it's kind of blame the victim. You shouldn't have uploaded it. So if you're going to upload your amazing presentation on, on the 10 rules of life, and that's how you make your money off of, you shouldn't have uploaded it. And I know that's blaming the victim. But nowadays, that's the way to share it. I can turn it off, but I know how to go into it even if they don't let me do it. And lots of other people know how to do it as well. So you have to be happy. Or you can just use that to your favor and put some watermarks on the video or just talk a lot about your company and you know, whatever. So you can go right on the you have to come to you have to come to grips that it could get stolen. The best thing to do is put your watermark on it, put your copyright on it, make it as obvious as possible that it's yours. So if it does go off to some other website on some other country, it still has your logo, it still has your link, it still has a link back to your website. And maybe you'll get some traffic where you never expected. But unfortunately, there really isn't a way to protect your stuff online. You could put your copyright in the corner and then haul them to court, but good luck hauling a foreign company into an American court, and vice versa. Comment here? No. So, that's really hard to deal with. Yes? As sort of a side note, I know situations where a site will actually hope people take their pictures until they can't sue them. There's always a way to make money, and uh, I guess that's one way. Um, sounds pretty weird, but I guess if it works for them, unfortunately it works. Uh, I'll mention a couple more interesting sites, then we'll take a break. Okay, so the YouTube of PowerPoints. Um, have you heard of these things called podcasts? If you haven't, a podcast is basically an internet radio program, but it's usually not live. A regular radio show is, I'm driving on the commute, I turn on the radio at 6 p.m. and I hear the same show over and over. If I miss it at 6 p.m., I missed it. A podcast is, they create a show, they put it up online, and then you subscribe to it. Then, whenever the new show comes out, it automatically downloads to my phone, my iPod. That's where it came from, podcast. But it works on Android phone, Windows phone, iPhone, whatever. You can even watch, listen to podcasts on your computer. So podcasts are another big thing coming up nowadays. People creating five-minute long shows, ten-minute, hour-long shows, whatever, on any topic. People talking to each other on any topic. That could be valuable for me. Let's say I am a social media firm and I want to get more customers. I could have a weekly or monthly podcast where for 10 minutes I talk to some of my colleagues about the trends of social media. So then I get subscribers and some amount of those subscribers are gonna tune in every time I make a new show and they'll absorb the information and they'll do it themselves or attempt to. And then eventually they might say, well, this is great knowledge, but I really need a professional. These professionals, I hear them every month. They know what they're doing. I'll check out their website. Maybe I'll hire them. So anything you create content-wise to get you more traffic, a simple five-minute show once a month that you can get subscribers to and traffic is a viable thing. So, podcasts, the YouTube of podcasts, soundcloud.com. Yes, there's iTunes, but iTunes is basically just a middleman. You go to iTunes, you search for podcasts and subscribe, but you don't really do that much on iTunes. I don't save my shows on iTunes. Uh, I create a, a little storefront and such on iTunes, but I don't actually do the technical aspect of podcasts on iTunes. They just distribute my shows. Pod, uh, iTunes distributes my shows. SoundCloud is where I actually create an account and upload my files and see my statistics. It's one of many places where you can upload sound. It's the YouTube of sound, of podcasts. So for example here, if I search VM Campos, there's my podcast right there. My podcast about comic books. So 
you can go here, you can subscribe, you can listen to this episode. You don't have to subscribe, you just click play and you listen to it. 11 episodes so far. And um, <coughs> you can also listen on iTunes and on Google Play and so forth, but this is where it comes from to go out to everywhere else. And you can take this, for example, this has got share. Take this code, this embed code, I'm going to take it, and then again, paste it into the text widget of WordPress, and now I've got my podcast embedded onto my website. Someone visits my website, they want to listen to my episode, can play it and there it is. If they really like it, they can click and subscribe or download it or whatever. So this is the modern uh, modern websites. Multimedia. If you've only got text, if you've only got text, that's the minimal. You want something else. Pictures, maybe <coughs> videos maybe podcasts, and yes, that's a lot of work, a lot of effort, but it could pay off. I'm sorry I interrupted you. What was that? Oh, thanks. Cool. So I noticed in the share embed section again, off to the right it says WordPress code. Is there a difference? Yeah, because WordPress has become such the biggest uh, platform out there. There's special code for WordPress in that it's also known as a short code. This embed code right here will work on any website. If I create a Wix website, a Squarespace website, a Dreamweaver website. But if I've got a WordPress website, that's the specific code there. The confusing thing again is the WordPress code, the short code, usually is to embed that directly into a post. I'm writing a blog post, I wrote one paragraph, and I want to add my podcast in between that and another post. That's usually the short code, the WordPress code. I want to put it in a sidebar, that's usually the plain old embed code, which is usually an iframe. Do you see the code there that says iframe? And that's what we saw over at uh, SlideShare also. Question? Items. On SoundCloud? Um, well, let me try that right now. Let's say uh, how to use social media. Let's see if anyone has created any content about social media. So it's giving me everything here visual storytelling, how to use visuals and social media. So I'm getting results. Um, I, I have a bunch of results. Let's say I first go look at tracks, filter results, added any time, any length to listen to. Hmm. I don't seem to see a way to organize it by popularity. I see it on the side here. This has got 38 plays. This has got 112. This has got 73. 136. I don't seem to see a way to organize this by popularity. The podcast episode 2, how to use social media to generate leads. Yeah, I see that we can filter it by when it was added, how long it is, and if it's copyrighted and such, but I don't seem to see a way to organize it that way. For SEO standpoint, is having an audio feed also? Um, the more ways you can reach an audience, the better. So some audience is going to want to, to read something because they can't listen to something, and some audience wants to listen to it because they can't read it. So if I can do both, then I can reach double the audience. If I only do one, I'm reaching part of the audience. For SEO, the more of an audience you can reach, the better. That's why I'm going to uh, make uh, you know, a, a 200 word version of the podcast. I won't say everything that we said. I'll write 200 words there with a link to the podcast. Then I'm going to share that podcast on Twitter to get more traffic there. And then 
I'm using as many avenues as possible to help my SEO to get me more traffic. So the, the widgets can be very pop, very powerful. Text widget, one of the most powerful ones, and it seems so basic, but that's tied into all of these extra online resources, all of the shareable code that then we can add to our site and in a variety of ways. Like I said, you can do affiliate marketing. Put that code in there, click there, make me some money. So at this point, let's take our second break. When we come back, we'll further get more complex. I'll talk about more plugins that are useful, more features that we can add to our basic site. It's 2.33. We'll be back at 2.43, and we'll learn some more. <laughs>